Hey guys, so the seven ways to avoid online dating scams is to watch for these seven sneaky red flags. With somewhere between 40 and 70% of new romantic relationships starting online on dating sites, well, these seem like an obvious choice to go shopping for love. Unfortunately, unscrupulous people take advantage of vulnerable people. I know of a man who lost $5,000. I know of a woman who lost $50,000. And I know a man who lost over $5 million. Scammers can be very sweet and charming and are often quite young and very attractive. And the next thing you know, you're up hundreds or thousands of dollars or worse and you feel like a fool. You end up shying away from dating entirely and you spend your evenings eating three-day-old leftovers in front of the TV, vowing to never go on a dating site again. Well, my friend, you deserve fresh food and you deserve an amazing woman with integrity to share it with. If you're new to my channel, I help men decode modern women so you can find, attract, and keep your keeper. My videos are for you if, well, you know, women need to learn and appreciate a lot more about men these days. You can only do what you can do. Welcome to Just the Tip. Let's jump in. Watch out if, number seven, she's way better looking than you or a lot younger than you. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Because the reality is, yes, if you meet in person, there's a chance you can charm the socks right off her and some other attire. But online is a different story. A woman who hasn't met the charming real life in person you might be after something else. If you post a lot of photos that show off your financial status, whether or not you have financial resources, then you're going to attract scammers or at the minimum gold diggers. And even if you don't post those kind of photos, scammers will still prey on lonely men and will take away whatever you have for retirement. So be cautious if there's a big gap between your age or attractiveness and hers. The next red flag is one many guys fall for because you are innate heroes. Number six, at the first sign of a damsel in distress, run. You feel good helping others, especially if you can help a woman, but scammers prey on this. And even if she's not a scammer, you don't want a fixer-upper. If she gives you some sob story about how hard up she is, that's your cue to run away. Key point, even if she tells you she's dealing with it and doesn't want your help, that may just be a setup. And then she'll be sweet and saucy and eventually she'll be in a tougher spot whereby you feel compelled to offer help. And be wary if she asks for a very small amount of money. That can be a test to see how you react. Later, she'll be asking for more. Key point, human nature is to invest more money in something that we've already invested in. Now to weed out the unsophisticated scammers, you'll want to heed the next tip. Five, move to video call as soon as possible. So women need to feel safe. And while meeting in person is ideal, she might not feel ready for that right away if she's just met you online. And messaging is good to get to know her initially, but you do need to move into a video call because you want to be able to verify her identity and be able to see face to face that she is who she says she is. So a video call can help you confirm that. And it also helps you get to know her personality and intentions. If she's resistant to a video call, or makes excuses continually, that's a red flag. If she's been equally engaged in your conversations online, then you, it should be safe to suggest a video call within three to five online conversations. Assuming you're in the same city, you could say something like, I've enjoyed chatting with you and want to meet you in person. Are you ready to meet in person or do you prefer a quick video chat first so you can verify my photos aren't 20 years old? If you're not in the same city, then just skip that part. Key point. If you've built some rapport and she's interested in you, any woman who is interested in looking for a long-term relationship with the right person will want to meet in person sooner than later. If she says no or not yet, it could be that she's not ready, or it could be that she's not sure about you, doesn't like you, or she's a scammer. Again, most women who are actually serious about finding the right person will want to meet in person within a few weeks of meeting online and engaging. At the same time, be careful if she wants to move too fast. And that brings us to number four, put the brakes on rapid advancement. If she wants to meet in person right away, that should be a red flag regardless of whether or not she's a scammer. If she agrees with everything you say, flatters you with tons of compliments or moves to sexual undertones or even overtures right away, that should be a red flag for you. Either she's completely reckless 
or she's planning to lure you into a situation whereby you think you're in for a good time, but instead you wake up with a throbbing headache and a missing wallet. Remember, women's primary need is to feel safe. If she's speeding along without caution, that could be a red flag that she's after something else. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Or she'll video call with you right away and she is that hot chick online just to virtually seduce you and suck you into her scam. Don't let your heart or your wrong head lead you into temptation with someone you don't know yet. And this brings us to number three. Do your research before meeting. If you've had a video call or two or more and everything seems okay so far, then it's appropriate to research who she is. You've offered up your name, your social media, and maybe a professional site with limited information so she can do her recon so it's easy and appropriate for you to ask for the same. Google her name. See what comes up on social media. Does her friend list look suspicious? Are they all foreign accounts with limited info? Are there only provocative photos of herself or no real photos of herself? Does she have a few interactions? These are all pink flags at minimum. Now, if she's not ready to give you that information, she may just be cautious or private, but you should proceed with caution. And if she won't video call with you or meet in person within the first few weeks, move on. Two, keep your personal information private. Now, even though you shared your name and where to find you online in general, you wanna make sure you don't reveal your full legal name, where you live, your email address, or your phone number right away. Key point, she may be the window dressing to a larger scam operation with a crew working the operation. Scammers use your personal information to steal your identity or commit other crimes. Now, if all this sounds like way too much risk, just remember, most people are still meeting online now. You just have to be careful. I meet a lot of happy couples who met online on dating sites. And this next tip will also help protect yourself. And it's one you probably haven't consciously thought of. Number one, and then I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. Use a reputable dating site or app. There are tons of new dating sites and dating apps with all kinds of niche markets, but you want to avoid using those free and new sites and opt instead for more reputable, well-known sites that have better security measures to protect you. You want to know you can report a suspicious account and it'll be taken seriously. And don't hesitate to block or report any woman you find suspicious. Okay, now the bonus tip actually ties in to the real life scam stories I mentioned at the beginning. Bonus tip, trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, no matter how badly you want it to be right, Trust your gut. If it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. If you have a bad feeling about her, no matter how charming or sexy she is, trust your gut. It's located a little higher than the other area that's at telling you to ignore those red flags. And don't feel terrible if you have succumbed to one of these scammers. They are professionals. It's happened to many a smart man. Example, businessman met a businesswoman. She was in financial investment, owned her own home in Vancouver. Everything seemed legit. After getting to know each other for quite a long time, she eventually offered him an investment opportunity. It was a too good to be true deal, but he was cautious. He only put a little bit of money in. And guess what happened? No, he actually got his money back with a really nice return. So then what happened? She offered him another investment. This time he put a little bit more in. Guess what happened? Some of you might have guessed. He got another good return. Ah, but each time he kept putting in more until eventually he put in over $5 million. And that's when things went awry. There was a snag in the investment and his funds were tied up indefinitely. Ouch. Turned out she had a bunch of fraudulent mortgages on that house that was hers. Did he go bankrupt? I'll tell you what happened at the end. Now I know you may be scared off dating entirely, but again, online dating is where most people are meeting nowadays. And here's the thing, and this ties into the bonus tip. All these victims that I know all said there were red flags right from the beginning that they chose to ignore, either because of hope or greed or simply loneliness. They got sucked in. They allowed themselves to be sucked in. So 
If you watch for these seven red flags and these ways to avoid being scammed and online dating, then you should be safe. And if you do want to consider online dating options, then you might want to consider getting my online dating video program. It's only $10 and has a few short videos covering the most common mistakes men make online, how not to do them, and how to initiate and carry on a conversation starting online. By doing your research, keeping your personal information private, watching for red flags, using a reputable dating site, and most of all, trusting your gut. You can stay safe while looking for love online. Okay, what happened to him? The almost ex-millionaire who almost went bankrupt after several years and some help from the FBI fraud department, he got most of his millions back. If you've had an online dating scam story, my heart goes out to you. That really, really sucks. I invite you to share your story in the comments so others can learn from it. Thanks for being here. God bless.